Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Odo Sendai Dukai and this video is about the most important tool to use when it comes to controlling your DAW, or as you probably say, the controller door integration. Then let's get started. It's about the controller scripts, namely the free and open source, and I would say even say premium mm -hmm. scripts driven by Moss by Jürgen Moosgraber who is better known as Moss. If you never heard of it, um, which I somehow doubt, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. The link to the downloadable scripts and to Jürgen's YouTube channel with all his videos can be found in the description. In short, these are ready-made DAW integrations for various controllers mm -hmm. via MIDI, Open Sound Control, Meki UI and Meki MCU mm -hmm. for Bitwig and also for Cocos Reaper. Well-known controllers and companies that are directly supported by this power package include Ableton Push, Push 2, Push 3, various Archive, Arturia, Native Instruments and Novation controllers, Electra One, ESI, XGEM, FaderFox, Yeltex, Turn and even Gamepads. These also include tools such as MIDI Monitor and an auto color script that automatically colors tracks according to their name. For the Ableton Push 2 integration in Bitwig, I've already produced several tutorials here on the channel and made them available for viewing. These scripts for DAW integrations are so well thought out for the individual controllers and their practical use to that all hardware manufacturers should be ashamed to stand in the corner with the integrations in the minute of silence that now follows. In some cases, the functionalities of the controllers with the corresponding driven by MOS script far exceed the possibilities provided by the manufacturers. And some of them can only be used properly with these scripts. Jürgen Eka Moss has done an absolute brilliant job here. And as if that wasn't enough, Moss adds a universal script called Flexi, or actually generic Flexi. This is a generic and very flexible script. With this Flexi script, you can configure any controller that you can somehow connect to your computer and that is also recognized via USB MIDI or Dean MIDI, Open Sound Control, Meki HUI or Meki MCU. And this genius generic Flexi script is exactly what we are talking about here. You can, of course, also use the other scripts that are supplied if you have the corresponding controllers. Now let's get down to business. After you've downloaded and installed Driven by Moss, you now want to configure your super exotic or very simple standard MIDI controller. I do this here in Bitwig. I assume it works similarly in Cocos Reaper. In Bitwig, open the settings, then click on controllers on the right, on the left, sorry. And at the bottom, click on plus, add controller, and in the middle window that opens under product, select Flexi and press add on the right hand side. In the new controller entry, you can change the name by double clicking on Flexi. I do this um, by leaving Flexi, so I always know immediately that I'm using the Flexi script and add the device name to it. Then you select the MIDI in and MIDI out interfaces on the right hand side, if available, and a very long and impressive list of options opens up. This is always the moment when many people start to sweat. But stay relaxed, these are simply the huge number of options that are now available to you. Let's start with an overview of what you see in front of you. The on off button activates or deactivates the script and assigns or releases the MIDI ports. 
If another script is available for your controller on your system, this will be displayed on the left-hand side with a pull-down menu. If not, there's nothing there either. The gear wheel folds and unfolds the entire configuration. The activated speech bubble ensures that some changes are displayed as pop-up in the middle of Bitwig. The matrix provides a colored frame that is drawn around the area that can currently be controlled with the button knobs or faders. The color for the frame can be set directly next to it. The rectangle with the arrows in all directions um, is the setting for Bitwig to follow the movements of the controller. And this is how the colored frame moves. Click, uh, click on the question mark to open the Driven by Moss PDF manual. Below this area, there are the slots. This allows you to save 300 settings for functions that you assign for, to buttons, rotary knobs or faders. In the lines below, you can see the properties of a button, rotary control or fader when you use it. What type the message is, what number the knob has, on which MIDI channel it is currently being sent, what resolution the knob works with, and so on. And finally, there is the set button so that you can assign the button, knob or fader you are using to the selected slot or memory location. Here are a few power tips. Don't number your function in ascending order from one, but match the MIDI CC or the MMCC number that the button, button knob or fader sends with the memory slot. For example, if a button sends MIDI CC 85 or 86, save it to slot 86 so that you can always quickly and easily check which function is hidden on which button or quickly assign a different function to the button. This simply makes it easier to find which button is assigned to which function. Many of the buttons send their messages via MIDI channel 1, others via MIDI channel 16, and still others via the MIDI channel set that is currently set. Depending on this, you can use this to assign the buttons, knobs or faders twice or more on a controller that does not have so many buttons, but supports this. And thus, add more functions than the controller has physical switches. For example, you can assign all the keys on a keyboard to, uh, specific, to specific functions via MIDI channel 2. With a small 25 key controller, you have 25 more functions available via the controller by using an additional MIDI channel. And you would theoretically have 15 usable MIDI channels so theoretically, 375 more functions. Okay, only 300 because you only have 300 memory slots. But on the other hand, you would have to be able to memorize all these functions. So limit yourself to useful and important functions that you can remember. Here are a few useful functions as an example. Play, stop, record and undo. Set the mod wheel to different MIDI channels to control the different knobs of the remote controls if you have no other knobs or faders on the controller. A button that triggers the MIDI CC64 sustain pedal so that the controller holds the last pressed keys until you press this button again. This is a hold function if your controller doesn't have one. This leaves your hands free to do other things in the meantime. If you have any more ideas, please write your suggestion in the comments. So once you have pressed the set button, the settings from the upper info area should be adopted and assigned to your memory slot. You can now change these settings manually. In most cases, everything is correct as it is transferred. But sometimes you want or need to change some settings for certain reasons. The MIDI channel field are important here, where you can also select, for example, all MIDI channels or set differently configured button messages for knob mode. This can vary from controller to controller. 
in the selected slot MIDI device update area, you can send the actions back to your controller. Some controllers can process and display these, others cannot just try it out. And now we come to the many functions that can be selected. These are um, divided into clear categories and it would take hours to go through each one, but they all follow the same principles. There are toggle functions for switching on and off, select functions for targeting selection, scroll function, previous and next functions. And I think that's about it. Simply select the category and the desired function and you're done. There are two special functions, function categories. Um, these are modes and options and actions. I discussed the modes and the associated options in a separate video. This will take your controller to the next level. And the total of eight actions that you can configure below relate to all kinds of other functions that Bitwig has to offer, such as uh, saving the track, zooming, calling um, up the piano roll, comping functions, and so on and so forth. This allows you to control all areas in Bitwig via your controller, if you can memorize all the assignments. Then there is a global shift button, which provides a few more small Bitwig functions. A special button is also required here. This does not work with every button. Please take a closer look at the manual. I would like Bitwig to provide a real shift function so that the buttons can simply be assigned twice. Because often enough, you don't have enough buttons available, so virtual duplication of the buttons using the shift function would be extremely helpful. And now the most important function of all, saving the entire FlexiScript configuration you have made here, because if you don't do this, eventually we'll be gone after restarting Bitwig. Here you select a path and enter file name in which your configuration will be saved and loaded when Bitwig or the controller is started. A little tip, I save my controller scripts in Bitwig Studio directory, in the same directory where my project's extensions or library are located. I back up the directory regularly so that the controller scripts are also backed up. Reloading the script is also sometimes very helpful if you make a lot of changes to your FlexiScript. This can sometimes confuse the controller. Then it often helps to simply switch the script off for a few seconds with the on off button at the top left and then switch it on again. This allows the controller to reinitialize itself. Below that, the keyboard patch section. There you can set which MIDI messages the FlexiScript should forward unfiltered to the DAW and which it should process. Note, if the FlexiScript processes the messages, then only these processed messages are sent to the DAW. For example, if you use an MPE controller or a sustain or expression pedal, if any of your connected devices no longer work as before or as they should, then take a look at what is defined here. I have already discussed the actions earlier. At the bottom is the workflow section where you can set sensitivity of the buttons in normal or slow mode. And whether or not deactivated tracks, sense, devices and layers should be excluded from your defined functions. So that was almost the entire FlexiScript with the exceptions of the modes and options but as I said, I'll discuss that in another video. As you can see, it's all quite simple, but you have an extremely wide range of options for integrating your controller into your DAW according to your wishes and needs. If you found the video helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, write a comment or greeting under the video, and I would be even happier if you share the video with others. Thank you very much. So that's it again. My name is Odo Sendaidukai. Thank you for your time and attention. And I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.